for BFM. Here we are covering important theory and objective questions. So watch the series till the end. Okay, let's start. If USD to INR rate is given as 48.10 and pound to USD rate is given as 1, what is the rate of pound to INR? Now, what is the, what is it to be used? It, we are using what? Over here, we will be using chain rule, right? Chain rule. What is the chain rule? When you don't know the rates of any currency, vis-a-vis -vis your local currency, okay? Means this pound to INR. If you don't know the rates, do you know the rates of pound to INR over here? No. But you are having the other rates, means some base currency rates you are having. What do you do? We use the chain rule. What is the chain rule? We use it like this. You have pound to, we, what, what do you want? See this, pound to INR. I will write it P to I. Okay, let's keep it simple. P to I. So it will be what? Pound to USD into USD to INR. Chain rule, you have studied this in your uh, JIV also. So pound to USD rate is what? 1. So keep it 1 only. USD to INR is what? 48.10. So your answer will be 1 into 48.10. So, B is the answer. Isn't it? Simple one. Next one. Chal. If USD INR rate is 48.10, USD JPY rate is 91.50, what is the rate of INR to JPY? This is not simple. Calculate the rate for 100 JPY. Remember, JPY is always, JPY means what? Japanese Yen. I will write it. JPY means Japanese yen okay it is their currency so japanese yen japanese yen is always calculated in terms of hundreds we always calculated 100 jpy 200 jpy 300 jpy rates are quoted in that that angle why because the currency is very small now it doesn't mean remember the currency is lower it doesn't mean the country is lower japan is the most developed country one of the top five developed countries in this world okay so once you have this top five developed countries and their currency is lower than that of Indians, you'll say then it is less developed than India? No, nothing like that. Currency is not at all related to the development of any country. Okay. So now Japanese yen. Okay. So what is the rate now? You want what? INR to JPY. See here. It is INR to JPY we want it. INR to JPY. I'll write this J over here. Okay. So again use the same chain rule, INR to USD, USD into USD to JPY. So are you having both the rates, INR to USD, are you having INR to USD? Here USD to INR rate is given, INR to USD into USD to JPY, this is what you want. So how will you do this? See here, we always, when I am saying this INR to JPY, I want this rate, uh, this uh, and JPY to INR. See, here, it's actually the reverse one. Whenever we find this rate, we find it this way: JPY to INR. This is what we find out, and then JPY to USD into USD to INR. This is what we find out always. So now, first find out this. If you want, you can reverse this. If they if they ask you in INR to JPY, you can reverse this later. Because this rate is difficult to find out. This rate is very simple. So JPY to USD, what is the rate? JPY to USD. And USD to INR, you know it. See here, this is 48.10. And this JPY to USD is, you don't know. This is 91.50, but that, that is what? This is USD to JPY. So that is 91.50. So if I want JPY to USD, this is upon 1. So if I want JPY to USD, it will be J upon U equals to 1 upon 91.50. Okay, that will be the rate. So now I have got the JPY to USD rate. Multiply this, put it over here. So my answer will be 1 upon 91.50 into 48.10. Okay, so what is the answer now? Do it on the Calci, everyone. Try it on the Galaxy. Yeah. Let me see in the comment section. Let me get the answer in the comment section. Everyone give me the answer in the comment section. 
डिवाइडेड बाय नाइंटी वन पॉइंट फाइव ओके सो इट इज पॉइंट फाइव टू फाइव सिक्स जीरो पॉइंट फाइव टू फाइव सिक्स नो दिस इज फॉर वॉट दिस इज जेपी वाई टू आई एन आर ओके जेपी वाई टू आई एन आर बट डे वॉन्ट इज फॉर वॉट हंड्रेड हंड्रेड जेपी तो मल्टीप्लाई दिस बाई हंड्रेड सो इट बी फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट फाइव सिक्स वेर द आंसर चेक दिस फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट फोर जीरो और एट जीरो देन एक्जैक्टली दे गिव यू दिस फाइव सिक्स आंसर और फाइव जीरो दे गिव यू सिक्स जीरो लेट्स टेक इट दिस विल बी अराउंड दिस सिक्स जीरो सो फिफ्टी एट फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो रफली फाइव सिक्स एंड सिक्स जीरो इन एग्जाम दे गिव यू द एग्जैक्ट आंसर ओवर यू सो इट बी फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो और फाइव सिक्स वट आर दिस रेट इज अगेन got it always do it for hundreds got it jpy is always calculated in terms of hundreds when the exchange rate is fixed by monetary authority of india of any country it is called as here when it is fixed by the monetary authority means what rbi tomorrow says that dollar to inr rate dollar to inr rate okay is let's say 70 rupees fixed fixed no changes in that it will not fluctuate it is fixed by this monetary authority so in this case what is it called as direct indirect floating or fixed direct indirect floating or fixed it is called as fixed isn't it it is fixed by the monetary authority of that country so it is fixed but obvious see here these things are done in many of the countries like i'll tell you there is huge interference in the currency by many of the countries directly i'll tell you where china if you check china their currency is what what is the currency of china anyone can give me what is the currency of china it is yuan right yuan main currency is their renminbi also but uh, main is yuan right china interferes a lot in their currency it is administered rate you can call it means administered means it is administered by the government direct interference whereas in india it's not fixed by the by any by any rbi or anyone it is based on demand and supply china interferes in this currency and it want if it wants it can reduce the rate if it wants it can increase the rate whenever it want whenever the government decides so this is known as this interfered rate So it is fixed by. They say that yes, we are also free floating currency, but nothing like that. Okay, it is fixed. Got it? Everyone, subscribe to Officer Zadar Twenty Four Seven YouTube channel. In this channel, you will be getting the latest updates of from IIBF on JIB and CIB. Various notifications, change in timing, change in subject, change in this. We give this now in the, uh, during the exam days. IIBF gives many notifications. So all of them you get it immediately on officers at that twenty four seven. You need not go to that IIBF website every now and then. Okay. So and secondly, free YouTube series. Right now, what are you watching? You are watching the free YouTube series. So similarly, you will be getting the free YouTube series on all the subjects of JIB and CIB. All of them. Okay. So subscribe to it right now. Click on this bell icon. Share it with your friends. Very important. Okay. Bell icon is important so that you get the notifications. when the exchange rate is fixed by the market demand and supply position it is called as market demand and supply position means whatever if your demand is high your rate goes high if your supply is high your rate goes low do you know this concept suppose if demand and supply means what if the demand for dollar goes up demand for dollar let's say it will go up if it goes up then what happens the rate for dollar becomes what the rate for dollar will be high or low give me will it be just type h or l will it be h or l if the demand for dollar is high will will the rate for dollar will be high, high or low it is high correct so if see your logic is very simple if the demand for any commodity is high the rate for that commodity will go up right this happens when does this happen this happens when you have huge fund flows coming in suppose if in india there are large amount of dollars coming in large dollars large amount everyone is investing dollars okay large dollars are coming in then what will happen 
in that case the supply will increase supply okay supply will go up if supply goes up then what happens the rate goes down so the dollar rate will go down right so when large dollars come in supply goes up supply of dollar goes up and the rate goes down and vice versa if the dollars go out of the country if all the investors are moving out of the country so dollars are moving out then in that case dollars are moving out okay if dollars are moving out means what happens there is a less supply of dollars in this country then the rate will go up so what is this called as actually whenever it's decided by this demand and supply position it is called as what direct floating indirect or fixed rate it is called as floating rate correct it is called as floating rate remember fixed and floating these are the two main rates what is this direct and indirect direct and indirect rates are also there what do we use in india so if i say one dollar equals to 80 rupees so what is this now is this a direct rate or indirect rate type in the comment section is this a direct or indirect give me the rate direct or indirect what is this called as it is what do you say guys direct or indirect it is called as direct rate direct whenever your dollar remember it the logic is simple your dollar is fixed and your rupee currency local currency is fluctuating it is called as direct rate indirect is reverse suppose if i give you 1 pound equals to 1.5 dollars so here what is happening dollar is fluctuating so this is called as indirect rate when your dollar is fluctuating it is called as indirect rate okay so now remember we in india should move out from this rate to this rate system because we must develop ourselves so so big that these we must also have this indirect rate system dollar should fluctuate and rupee should be stable right now it's the reverse thing but although now again i'll tell you don't confuse yourself with the currency because if you look at it pound is now having the indirect rate okay but pound is having what indirect means what is this economy bigger than that of india no indian economy is bigger than that of the this uh, britain economy or london economy then also they are having this indirect because these rates were fixed long back that's why they are still prevailing now within few years this will go this won't remain for long so because if the pound is not growing if the country is not growing will this indirect rate remain no us will say no forget this make this uh, pound also in the direct rate and in coming years if we grow with such this uh, such a speed there will be a time when we are direct rate will be converted to indirect rate we will be the governing power because we are already planning for growing to uh, third number of the economy right we are right now at fifth and we are moving towards the third so when we move towards the third these rates will change okay so this is got the concept of direct indirect floating and fixed right the term bid rate stands for bid bid means what bid rate bid offer bid offer okay bid offer it's like this bid offer so you call it buy and sell buy and sell so bid stands for direct indirect buying and selling so it stands for isn't it buying buying rate the selling rate of a foreign currency offered by a bank is called as just now we did it selling rate sell rate is known as what yes. give me in the comment section just now we saw it yeah this one sell is what correct type fast offer isn't it everyone download adda 24 7 app on your mobile in this app you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes ebooks tests whatever we need for clearing this giv and civ we'll get it we'll be getting it over here so that's why download this app immediately and start studying don't just download okay start studying country risk is an example of market risk credit risk operational risk and liquidity risk so country risk is an example of what 
Yeah. It is credit. Okay. Remember, credit risk is of two types. Credit. Mainly. There can be various types, but mainly two types. Okay. One is country. And second is counterparty. Counter party. Okay, what do you mean by this? Credit risk, country risk means what? Your party is good, means A is selling to B. Let's say A is selling the goods to B. Okay. So B is good. But the country in which B is living is bad. Afghanistan, North Korea. So B is good. But the second part is counterparty. Your B is bad. Country is good. USA, somebody staying in USA, somebody staying in Europe. Countries are good. But the party is bad. So that is counterparty. So country risk is an example of what? Credit risk. Isn't it? All of the following are the types of price risk. Except, except. So which is not the type of price risk. All of them. Let's see. Price risk means what? Commodity price risk. The price of any commodity. What is a commodity? Commodity is anything. Dollar is also a commodity. Okay. Currency is also a commodity. So commodity price risk. Exchange rate risk. That is also price risk. Because if the dollar rate changes or the exchange rate changes, definitely the price will change. So this is also the part. Stock price risk. And counterparty risk. Now it's typical. Then. Counterparty is what? Just now we saw it. Credit. So is it a part of, part of price risk? No, isn't it? So this is the answer. So these are all are true, 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 and this one is false. And we want false only, which is not the type of price risk, right? Stock price risk, obviously, stock price risk is a part part of price risk only, isn't it? In financial bond markets, and yeah, yeah in financial bond. Uh, in financial market, bond prices and yields are. So, this uh, bond price and yields are what? Directly or inversely related? Inversely, directly. Inversely or directly, depending on the type of the bond. None of the above. So, the bond prices and yields are always. They are always. Once remember the price of the uh, this uh, rate of interest, yield we call it. Yield means what? It's the rate of expected rate of interest. Here, what is yield? You need to understand that also. Expected rate of interest. Expected ROI. Okay, that is yield. There are two rates always in any bond. One is coupon and second is yield, right? So, coupon is always fixed. Once it is given, it's fixed. You can't change it. But this yield goes on changing. Expected rate goes on changing. If the expected ROI goes up, then the price of your bond, existing bond, will go down. Always remember. If the expected ROI goes down, your price of the bond will go up. So it is what? Inversely related. Isn't it? In financial bond market or market, bond prices and yields are inversely related. Always. You see this? What happened in this, uh, what, October, just type on Google, October 22 to December 22. Check the US bond rates. US bond rate. Check this. You'll get this. In US, the prices of the bond fell like anything. Why? Because the rate of interest or the bank, their Federal Reserve, increased the rate of interest. So that was the point. Okay. Now, how to join this uh, offices at the 24-7 YouTube channel or the Instagram channel or the LinkedIn channel? Scan this QR code. For this LinkedIn channel, scan this QR code, blue one. For the YouTube channel, scan this black QR code, this one. And for the Instagram channel, scan this QR code. You can join it immediately. Okay? Because on these channels, we are giving free YouTube series, we are giving ebooks, we are giving tests, some of the sample ebooks, simple, some during the exams, we take various tests as such, free tests. So you can join this right now, isn't it? Rate of cancelling the original contract is means whenever we cancel the original contract rate, it is done at what rate? TT buying, TT selling, bill buying, bill selling. See, here, cancelling the original contract rate, it depends on what rate are we talking of. Suppose I am calling buy rate, rate of cancelling the buy rate, okay. So, if I have purchased this dollar earlier, 
okay if i purchased it i might have purchased it at what rate i might have purchased it at either bill buying or tt buying depending on what type of transaction what it, it was if it was a, a spot transaction i might have done it at tt buying if it was a bill transaction i might have done it at a bill buying rate but cancelling is always done at the same rate that is known as tt selling cancelling here cancelling means reversing that transaction so that will be always done at tt selling rate of booking a new contract for next one month if tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling see here next one month i want so just now i told you spot transaction spot will always be done at tt whereas future future transaction will always be done at bill bill okay so it will be done at a bill rate but bill means what booking new contract for one month which contract suppose if i say export contract export so export means what buying so i'll be using bill buying rate so i'll be using bill buying over here if it's import then i'll be using bill selling rate so next one month export the question is given then you'll be doing it at bill buying rate okay here we are covering important theory and objective questions so watch the series till the end okay let's start first question the liquidity risk of the bank arises from so liquidity risk of the bank of any bank liquidity means what what do you mean by liquidity risk it means that i don't have money at right time that is very important at right time whenever i have to pay my emi i don't have money that is a liquidity risk same thing about the banks also bank has to pay some bond holder okay at that time bank doesn't have the money that that is a liquidity risk if some depositor comes for withdrawal bank doesn't have money that is a liquidity risk so this liquidity risk of the bank arises from number 1 funding of long term assets by short term liabilities long term assets by short term liabilities what do you mean by this word suppose let's say let's consider these all these cases okay let's consider all these cases let's say this is deposits here liabilities means deposits assets means loans okay now case number a funding of long term assets by short term liabilities means what i'm having a deposit of 1 year and i am giving a loan of 3 years will this create a liquidity risk for me just type yes or no over here huh? let's see later b1 funding of short term assets by long term liability so deposit of 3 years and loan of 1 year will it create a problem for me funding of long term liabilities by short term assets c funding of long term li this is ab initio wrong this is from start only wrong why liabilities funded by assets is it possible not at all possible assets are always funded by long term liabilities means long term or short term assets are funded by the liabilities so c is ab initio right wrong okay ab initio means from the start itself we need not even discuss this that is the point now the question lies between a and b Between a one year deposit I am having and three years loan I have given, so will it create a problem for me? Yes, it will create. Why? Because this guy who has deposited, this person will come to me after one year, but this person will pay to me after three years. So this will be a problem for me. What about B? If this person has given me a deposit of three years, this guy will come after three years, isn't it? This guy will come after three years, but this this guy will pay me immediately after one year. So I won't have any liquidity problem over here because whenever this person comes, I can repay him back, him or her. Okay. So the answer is C. Funding of long-term assets by short-term liabilities. This is a basic logic behind which, based on which this question is dependent. And such questions are asked you in exam. Remember. Okay. Move on. Funding liquidity risk is defined as funding liquidity. Remember this. Funding means. i don't have funds liquidity risk but related to funds so that is defined as excess of liabilities over assets excess of long term liabilities over long term assets excess of short term liabilities over short term assets inability to obtain funds to meet the cash flow obligations very simple definition 
excess of long term liabilities or long term assets is this a liquidity risk excess of liabilities means more of deposits less of loans obviously that can be the answer similarly b can also be an, the answer look at this all the answers seem to be right all of them if you check this all of them seem to be right liability is greater than assets here yeah, i'll show you over here liabilities greater than assets in all the cases logic is same okay liabilities are greater than assets here or your excess liabilities or assets here long term or long term but after all the same liabilities and assets short term or short term logic is same liabilities or assets so logic is liabilities are more than assets so definitely that is the answer whenever i have deposits of let's say 100 rupees okay and loans of let's say 70 rupees okay so will it be a problem for me as a bank as a bank do i have a problem in this case okay just check your bank's ratios your bank's loans and as and deposit ratios is it always 100 100 let's say this is 100 this is also 100 is it always 100 100 no rbi has given me uh, given the term as your liabilities and assets should always be 70% so this is right okay assets will always be lesser than your liabilities always mean basically loans will always be lesser than your deposits of course the ratio is matched so that the rate of interest nii is not affected much so the correct answer is this inability to obtain funds to meet the cash flow obligations that is the correct answer okay so funding liquidity risk is defined as inability to obtain funds to meet the cash flow obligations okay liquidity risk in banks manifests in different dimensions which are these what do you mean by this manifest means comes it comes in various ways okay it comes in various ways dimensions means ways let's keep word simple isn't it so liquidity risk in bank comes in different ways what are these funding risk arises from the need to replace net outflow withdrawal and non renewal of deposits it can be just answer think over it and answer fine so here cib is not like jib just you got the answer tick it no here you have to think funding risk arises from the need to replace net outflows non renewal of deposits means whatever is going out that needs to be replaced suppose if tomorrow there is a huge withdrawal from your bank run on the bank we call it run on the bank right anyone knows run on the bank what is run on the bank type in the comment section uh, okay just type do you know run on the bank concept type yes or no only that must type it yes or no yes or no only that must don't give me run on the bank definition it's a big definition yeah yes 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 no 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 yeah some knows i am seeing see here run on the bank means when all the customers of your bank remember whatever i am saying when all the customers of the bank come for withdraw of deposits all of them so that is known as run on the bank there's some negative news in the newspaper something wrong about your bank so everyone comes for withdraw that is run on the bank so coming back to the question withdraw outflow withdraw so we need to replace replace these withdrawals through fresh funds so liquidity risk may arise from this also number 2 time risk arises from the need to compensate for non receipt of funds nps means basically uh, suppose if i am uh, if i have given a loan so what is my logic the logic says that that person will pay me the emi and yeah, or cc if given it, that person will pay me the interest and that interest i'll use it for paying to the depositors but if i don't get that interest don't get that emi then what so that will also create a time risk time risk means what at the time i am not having the funds call risk arises due to crystallization of contingent liabilities so call risk call risk arises from crystallization no? of contingent liabilities contingent means what contingent means which was not to come or a future transaction future like bank guarantee lc okay these are all contingent 
so it comes in which of the which of these cases both a and b okay i'll my mark it like this a b and c that is the best answer so the answer is actually this uh, a b and c because funding race is to replace the net outflows that is also correct time race skills for compensating the non receipt of and that is also correct and call risk call risk is also a type of this, this liquidity risk only because if tomorrow there is a huge bank guarantee to be paid by you then from where will you get the funds urgent funds okay so both uh, not be both actually it's a b and c okay everyone subscribe to officer vedda 247 youtube channel in this channel you will be getting latest updates from iibf on jib and ci means what is updates from iibf IBF gives various notifications, like now now it's exam time, so it will give certain notification that this exam time changed, that exam time changed, this subject portion is this something has been added over here, something like this will give. So these notifications are explained on this channel immediately. Officer Zadda twenty four seven. Also, you get free YouTube series here. Right now, what are you watching? You are watching the same free YouTube series. So you get a free YouTube series on the channel for all the subjects of JIB and CIB. All okay. So that's why subscribe to it. Click on the bell icon. Click on the like button. Share it with your friends. Okay. When an asset maturing in uh, uh, where an asset is mature in two years, the liability risk will be. Suppose if any asset means loan. Loan is maturing in two years. Okay. Two years means what? I have given a loan and that guy will be guy or girl will be paying me after two years. Okay, so what is the liability risk? Now look at this liability risk. Means what risk will I face from the depositor's angle? Basis risk, yield curve risk, gap risk, embedded option risk. From the depositor side, I'll face this risk. Depositors, embedded option, right? Here, if this asset is maturing in two years, means there is a loan. Let's look at it this way: loan. Okay. If this loan is maturing in two years, this deposit, I may face a deposit. Here, I have to fund this loan by this two years. So, what I have to fund is, I have to see to it that I have sufficient deposits for this loan. But if this deposits get matured, FD gets matured, there is a withdrawal, then. Will I get the same FD of the same amount afterwards? If after the withdrawal, will I get the FD of the same amount at the same rate? That is known as embedded option risk. Embedded means what? Any time it can withdraw. Suppose if I need this one lakh rupees over here, and this one lakh is withdrawn from here, depositor's angle, then my balance sheet is in a problem. So embedded option risk means there is a chance of withdrawal of FDs. Withdrawal of savings deposits, plus there is a chance of repayment of these loans also. Now this is from the loan side. Somebody rep uh, repays these loans, so embedded option risk is for both the sides, loan also and deposit also. Here we are talking of liability deposit side, so that's why it's a main embedded option risk. The risk of adverse variance of mark to market. Of change in the market price of the interest rate instruments, equities is called. So mark to market. What is mark to market? Mark to market means that um, basically the logic behind mark to market is. Suppose if I brought, uh, let's say, a bond, and that bond I am not going to sell immediately. But mark to market means what? Whether if what is notionally I am gaining some profit or not in that. That's the meaning of mark to market. Suppose if let's say you have brought a flat, you have purchased a flat. The flat right now you have brought it at let's say thirty lakhs. Now the flat is giving you around fifty lakhs. So this is what this difference is known as notional or mark to market. Notional or other name is mark to market M to M. Okay, M to M means what is the rate at which I had brought and what is the present value of my security. Okay. So risk of adverse variance of mark to market value of change in market price in the interest rate instruments, interest rate instruments is called as price risk, market risk, translation risk, both A and B. What is the answer? Let me get it from you now. I'll explain you, not an issue, but let me get it from you first. 
it is both and b price risk and market risk both because here mar market price risk is actually a part of market risk and price risk arises because of the interest rates if the interest rates go up interest goes up interest rate goes up then the price of the bond will go down price will always go down price okay so this is basically the logic behind this which of the following is not a market risk not okay not a market risk compliance transaction legal all of the above let me think type fast in the comment section which of the following is not a market risk not market risk means what what is a market risk market risk means that risk which is not in your hands not in your hands okay keep it very simple language okay not in your hands russia ukraine war not in your hands then the covid situation not in your hands right rbi changing the repo rate not in your hands so this is all market risk so which of the following is not a market risk so compliance risk compliance means what submitting the returns or submitting the consent documents to rbi it's in your hands you have to follow the compliance compliance so it is not in your hand right not a market risk so it is i'll write it not a market risk n transaction risk transaction means whatever transaction i am doing i must maintain precautions in that so there is no market risk external forces are not acting on this legal again it's a part of this transaction risk only right means basically operations risk these are all operation related risk so this is not a market risk answer is all of the above okay everyone download adda 24/7 app on your mobile in this app you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes ebooks test whatever we require for clearing jab and cab we will get it over here so that's why download it right now immediately and start studies don't just download it and keep it you have many apps in your mobile okay just tell me everyone how many total number of apps you have in your mobile how many we don't even know the numbers even i don't know how many of these apps have you watched do you watch regularly i know you had you watch only whatsapp regularly only whatsapp tick 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 and something some other one or two more nothing else okay somebody might be watching that shopping apps amazon and all those things that's okay but remaining apps we just download it and keep it don't just download it use it go through it what are you getting you are getting many free features over here of course paid classes are there but few free features also free tests you are getting free books you are getting free classes you are getting so download it and start studying okay country risk is an example of market credit operations and liquidity risk so country risk is an example of what it is a part of credit risk here credit risk always is of two types always remember this two types okay one is country and second is counterparty i'll just write it okay pull pull only i'll write it counterparty because many of the students might not understand this short form of this is actually cp okay but counterparty risk so country risk and counterparty risk credit risk always has two parts okay all of the following are types of price risk except now again we want except means not which is not the type of price risk so all of the following are the types of price risk except commodity price exchange rate stock price counterparty risk just now i gave you what is the answer just now just now just now yeah type fast just now i gave you yeah this one look at this credit risk is a has two parts credit and counter country and counterparty so counterparty will be a part of what will it be a part of price risk no it is a part of credit risk so this is credit risk this is not the one this is yes this is yes this is yes all these are price risk but this is the part of credit risk okay in financial market bond prices and yields are hmm jab jab studies okay 
bond prices and yields are inversely related directly related inversely or directly depending on the type of the bond and other goods jib jib okay give me the answer yes it is what what is the answer bond prices and yields inversely right if the yields go up what is yield yield means asking rate if the asking rate of any bond goes up the price of that bond will go down hi friends welcome to adda 24/7 we are in the scholar series for bfm here we are covering important theory and objective questions so watch the series till the end okay let's start the yield to maturity of a bond is same as so this ytm is same as what now i'll tell you something say this in any bond remember in any bond there are five elements always remember there are five elements out of these five three are static now look at this static means what they don't change at all let anything happen they won't change and two are dynamic okay d okay dynamic means what they will change now which are which one are the are the static one so remember this face value face value or it is called as par value also some books call this par value face value then second is period n period and third one is coupon coupon what is coupon see here coupon is a fixed interest which i'll be paying on that bond if you compare this with fd then the rate of interest which your bank gives which your bank gives is known as coupon so these three are static which is the dynamic one then dynamic means first one is market price <laughs> market price look at this price of the bond and second one is market rate both are market okay market rate okay so these two are dynamic now what do you mean by dynamic understand the term dynamic means if both of them will change basically now there is a rule to this now rule is what if the rate market rate goes up the price will go down if market rate goes up the price will go down okay this scene you had seen in this october to december 22 in usa you check right now also go on google and check october to december 22 bond rates of usa you will find the same problem the market rates were going up and the market price was going down now what is what is the question but your ytm where is this ytm ytm is nowhere over here where is ytm so this ytm is called as market rate see this there are four to five names to this ytm ytm will be called as ytm yield to maturity or second one is rate this market rate r every all of these are called as r okay next one you call it discount rate discount or any any name can be given na huh? discount rate next one you call it discount rate then uh, asking rate asking okay so any name can be given so the ytm of any bond is same as present value of the bond future value of the bond the bonds internal rate rate of return and none of these so what is this equal to always remember the present value of the bond present value present value formula is totally different future value that formula is also different bonds irr this can be thought of so this is you can call this as irr also internal rate of return so what is ytm ytm means when i hold any bond buy any bond and keep it up to the maturity understand this see this suppose i buy this bond today and keep it up to the maturity maturity means i am not selling that bond till the uh, end okay so i am not selling this bond so i buy this and say uh, keep it up to the end so what will happen what will i get in this i'll get one coupon every year i'll get i'll be getting some coupon year or six months whatever is decided right so i'll be getting the coupon fixed rate of interest and in the end i'll be getting the complete face value also so this is known as bonds internal rate of return or it is called as yt clear everyone concepts are clear that is important okay type yes in the comment section type yes if you have understood it so that i'll go ahead okay we'll see here it's not important that i'll cover many questions 20 questions 
but just covering the questions yeah ytm is same as uh, bonds internal value okay next 20 question what's the use you are in cib you are not in the in jib level jib level you can learn cib you can't learn okay cib you have to understand okay risk is defined as uncertain as uncertain is resulting in adverse outcome adverse in relation to the planned objective or expectations now this is simple we won't it won't take much time isn't it adverse variation of profitability or outright outright losses both a and b and none of these this is quite simple see a risk means what uncertainty basically remember risk means uncertainty uncertain that is known as risk but uncertain in what direction in your unfavorable direction remember anything in your unfavorable direction is a risk suppose if let's say i buy you only let's consider one simple thing you buy a flat tomorrow let's say let's say you buy it for 40 lakhs done now the value of that flat goes up 40 lakhs to 70 lakhs are you at risk no not at all risk is when the value of that flat goes down 40 lakhs to 30 lakhs then you are at risk so unfavorable so what is the answer over here quite simple a adverse outcome reverse adverse means not in my favor adverse variation not in my favor so answer is both isn't it how many of you have got this right at the end what do you do you you tell me a score whatever i'll be giving see this earlier one this one and this one you tell me a score also okay next one financial risk is defined as financial risk what is the financial risk See here, financial means what related to finance okay financial risk is defined as uncertainties in the cash flow uncertainties in the cash flow second variations in the net cash flow uncertainties resulting in outright losses and all of them simple one let me see how many of you are right over here uh, let me see your answers first uncertainties in the cash flow is it a financial risk Variations in the net cash flow. Uncertainty is resulting in the outright losses. Which one is the correct one? What do you think? Let me see. How many of you have typed it? Is it A, B, C or D? It is D. Correct? D, D, D. Correct? Yeah. Okay. One sec. Yeah. Let me change it to its mod B. Okay. So move on. Everyone download Adda 24-7 app on your mobile. In this app, you will be getting the pre uh, pre uh, premium study material plus live classes, ebooks, tests, whatever you want for clearing the JIB and CIB, you will get it over here. How to download it? We are having a QR code. It's given in the comment section below. Okay. Scan that QR code. You will join our Telegram channel. You can join our YouTube and Instagram also. Follow us on all these three. Okay. So download right now this app also. Okay. Uncertainties in cash flow, cash inflows or outflows can create uncertainties in net cash flow, profits, both A and B, none of these. So uncertainties in cash inflows or outflows, both. You will say, sir, inflows is okay. How come outflows? See, both are the same. Suppose if uh, sometimes my outflow is, let's say, 1 lakh and next month and my outflow is, let's say, 1.5 lakhs. It's an uncertain. Similarly, for inflow also. So, it will result in what? Net ca can create uncertainties in net cash flow, profits, both A and B. Obviously, isn't it? Both A and B. See, how many of you have written it? Correct. Type in the comment section. Have you got it right? Yeah. Which of the following is not correct? Now see here in exam you have to always check what is asked. Sometimes they will ask you what is correct. Sometimes they ask you what is not correct. So sometimes they ask you which one is false. So you have to tick the right one. Yeah, that's why you have to read the question properly. So which of the following is not correct? Lower risk implies lower variability in net cash flows. So lower risk means lower variability. What do you mean by this term? Lower risk, lower variability. Is it true? You want not correct. <coughs> okay, let me get the answer from you. Then I'll explain. Higher variability in net cash flow may result in higher profits or higher losses. 
higher risk would imply higher upside or downside potential and none of these so higher risk here first one lower risk means lower variability so that is true yes that is true why because if my cash flow is less uh, means the variability is less well, one month i get it one lakh next month i again get it one lakh one thousand or ninety nine thousand so that's variability is less suppose one month i'm getting one lakh next month i'm getting two lakhs after that month i am getting zero so that is higher variability so that will be a higher risk so this is true we want false isn't it what is our target our target is false higher cash variability in net and uh, net cash flow may result in higher profits or higher losses so higher variability sometimes i'm getting huge cash sometimes no cash so it may result in higher profits or higher losses both that is true again isn't it true isn't it higher risk would imply higher upside or higher downside higher risk higher upside or higher downside right have you seen this uh, day trading in stock market in options or futures mainly these two only options and futures you will see this sign higher upside higher downside you anyone is uh, just type in the comment section if you have uh, done the trading in bank nifty bank nifty trading anyone has done there you will find this higher upside higher downside higher risk so that is also true so which is false then none of these all of them are true okay all of them generally in exam we have a habit that none of these will never be true means never be the answer but remember this is cib in cib you can't guarantee anything you can get none of these answers also okay because remember higher variability means may result in higher profits and high or higher losses higher risk would imply higher upside or higher downside okay that is the basic uh, logic of this uh, alco department what is the alco department in the bank okay asset liability management so it basically deals with this higher upside and higher uh, downside okay yeah uncertainty with regards to interest rate at which future cash flow could be reinvested now with regards to interest rate at which future fund cash flows can be reinvestment we basically we are talking of reinvestment means what suppose if i am having an fd let's say today i am having an fd at fd okay i am having at let's say 8% this fd is for let's say 3 years so what is reinvestment risk or what is the risk in this after three years will i be getting the same rate of interest of eight percent or higher or higher or will i be getting eight percent or lower so this is this is known as which risk will i be getting the same rate or higher or lower so it is reinvestment risk interest rate risk gap or mismatch none of these what is in now name itself Naam hi kafi hai. Naam hi kafi hai. We have a dialogue no? in Hindi. Bas naam hi kafi hai. Reinvestment risk. Isn't it? That is the answer. Whether you will be able to reinvest this money at the same rate or higher or lower, that is basically the risk. Isn't it? Right? So here you will see what is this FD? We are talking of BFMs here. In BFM, remember, all your bonds are similar to FDs. Now tell me what is the difference between bond and FD? Difference is not much. Okay. Bond equals to, I'll just give it to you simple. Bond equals to negotiable FD. Remember, negotiable FD. Because what is FD? FD is not negotiable. Right? FD is not negotiable. Now, what do you mean by negotiable? If I have a FD, okay, in your bank, tomorrow if I send my brother or uh, tell my brother that what do you do? You take this FD and go into the bank and get the money in your savings account. Will you give him? Will you give him that? Uh, okay, you have brought this FD, so we'll transfer it to your account. No. How many of you will give him? Tell me. No, because FD is not negotiable. FD money is given only into that account of that same account holder. But bond is slightly different than FD. That's why, what did I say? Those three elements, static and dynamic. These dynamic ones are bonds. Means that is the difference between bond and FD. Otherwise, these three terms, static ones, are same as that of the FD. Isn't it? 
this one what was it this one yeah see this for these three terms bond and fd both are same this is the only part which changes bonds bond changes because of this this is not available in fd so that's why bond equals to negotiable fd isn't it got it so where were you yeah over here sorry investment got it subscribe to officers under 24 7 youtube channel as i told you join this channel immediately subscribe to it click on the bell icon here you'll be getting the latest updates on uh, iib from iib on cib and jib means update means whatever are the changes in the subjects or timing change then uh, what when you change many things you get it okay so all these changes so one is updates you will be getting the update and second most important second is free yt series free free yt series right now what are you watching you are watching the same free yt series so same free yt series you will be getting it over here okay so that's why subscribe to this officers at 24/7 join our linkedin see this uh, not linkedin telegram okay join our uh, telegram telegram then youtube youtube and insta all the three you have to join why because on all these three we provide uh, we provide all the questions also free question banks free tests okay plus videos videos are available on youtube also and all of these they are posted so that's why subscribe to it right now click on the bell icon when the bank borrower or the counterparty fails to meet its obligations regarding the terms of agreed with the bank it is called as see your counterparty is failing counterparty fails to meet its obligations so what do you, what do you mean by this counterparty is failing market risk operational risk liquidity risk credit risk type fast in the comment section is it a b c or d what do you say counterparty is failing means what uh, say in your case only you have given a loan and a party over there the borrower is unable to pay you so what is that is it market risk somebody is type market risk no market risk is not the same it is credit risk remember it's credit risk see here i'll tell you something credit risk always is of mainly i'll tell you there are many types but mainly there are two types okay one is counterparty and second is and this country risk okay one is counterparty second is country risk always remember credit risk is of two types counterparty and country okay so counterparty means what your other party is not paying share it means simple logic is over here suppose if your party counterparty means you have sold the goods okay you are the seller okay seller and this counterparty is a buyer okay buyer now imagine your counterparty is in usa okay your buyer is in usa so what does it mean your usa country is good are there any legal problems in usa no nothing europe no problem only the problem is your party is bad it can happen anywhere okay so this is counterparty country is good but the counterparty is bad second is this country risk your counterparty is good let's say your buyer is in afghanistan afghanistan okay or mm, second case pakistan also nowadays pakistan even uh, sri lanka even bangladesh has the same problem See here, many of the countries have restrictions on transfer of dollars. Transfer of dollars, okay. So if you have this problem over here, then your counterparty may be good, but the country is bad. Your counterparty is ready, ready to send you the money, but the country has put the restrictions. So that's why this is known as credit risk, okay. When the bank chooses a wrong strategy or follows long-term business strategy, which might lead to its failure, so wrong strategy for the future, it is known as what? Credit, operational, market, or strategy. This is a logical question. This is less related to CIB, more related to business. Yep. But this risk is there in your CIB. Eh? It is called as. What is this? A, B, C, or D? Credit ops, market, or strategic? Long-term strategy. Okay, I'll give you an example. Nokia. 
Nokia. You all might have seen those Nokia phones some five, ten years back, right? Ten, not ten now, fifteen years back, isn't it? Two thousand eight. Nokia was the market leader in mobile phones. At that time, it was thought that Nokia will never die. As during the British time, it was thought the sun never sets in the British Empire. Similarly, it was thought that Nokia will never die. But what happened to Nokia? Gone. Nokia is gone. Why? Wrong strategy. Strategic risk. Same thing happens with the bank. When the bank chooses a wrong strategy, it will go down, collapse. Okay, in the long run. So that's why this is known as strategic risk. Always remember this. Return on zero investment would be dash as compared to the opportunities available in the market. So return on zero investment, zero in zero risk. Sorry, zero risk investment. So zero risk means what? What do you mean by zero risk? Suppose if I keep the keep the money, let's I'll give you two options. Suppose if I keep the money in a nationalized bank FD, let's say SBI FD. SBI FD, okay. Or second is I keep the money in stock markets, stocks. What will happen? This SBI FD is safe, something six seven percent whatever I will get it, okay, roughly. That is safe. But what about the stocks? These stocks might give me let's say thirty percent also, or zero percent also, or minus thirty percent also, isn't it? So that's why this is riskier element. But returns are also the same way. Higher the risk or higher the returns. Always remember, high risk, high risk equals to high returns. Always remember this logic. Okay, high risk equals to high returns. So, what will be the answer over here? Return on zero risk investment would be dash, high, low, medium, high or low, depending on the type of the investment. What do you say? Higher or low depending on the type. Somebody is typing this D. See here, if it is higher on the type of instrument, then it becomes the riskier element. We are talking of zero risk. Zero risk will always be low. Treasury bills, T bills are zero risk instruments. Okay. Hi friends, welcome to Adda 24-7. We are in the scholar series for BFM. Here we are covering important theory and objective questions. So watch the series till the end. Okay, let's start. If USD to INR rate is given as 48.10 and pound to USD rate is given as 1, what is the rate of pound to INR? Now, what is it? What is it to be used? It, we are using what over here? We'll be using chain rule, right? Chain rule. What is the chain rule? When you don't know the rates of any currency, vis-a-vis -vis your local currency, okay? Means this pound to INR. If you don't know the rate, do you know the rates of pound to INR over here? No. But you are having the other rates, means some base currency rates you are having. So what do you do? We use the chain rule. What is the chain rule? We use it like this. You have pound to, we, what, what do you want? See this, pound to INR. I will write it P to I. See, let's keep it simple. P to I. So, it will be what? Pound to USD into USD to INR. Chain rule, you have studied this in your uh, JIB also. So, pound to USD rate is what? 1. So, keep it 1 only. USD to INR is what? 48.10. So, your answer will be 1 into 48.10. Okay? So, D is the answer. Isn't it? Simple one. Next one. Chal. If USD INR rate is 48.10, USD JPY rate is 91.50, what is the rate of INR to JPY? This is not simple. Calculate the rate for 100 JPY. Remember, JPY is always, JPY means what? Japanese Yen. I'll write it. JPY means Japanese Yen. Okay? It is their currency. So Japanese yen. Japanese yen is always calculated in terms of hundreds. We always calculate it 100 JPY, 200 JPY, 300 JPY. Rates are quoted in that, that angle. Why? Because the currency is very small. Now it doesn't mean, remember, the currency is lower. 
it doesn't mean the country is lower japan is the most developed country one of the top 5 developed countries in this world okay so once you have this top 5 developed countries and their currency is lower than that of indians you'll say then it is less developed than india no nothing like that currency is not at all related to the development of any country okay so now japanese yen okay so what is the rate now you want what inr to jpy sure it is inr to jpy we want it inr to jpy i'll write the j over here okay so again use the same chain rule inr to usd usd into usd to jpy so i having both the rates inr to usd i having inr to usd here usd to inr rate is given inr to usd into usd to jpy this is what you want so how will you do this see here you always when i am saying this inr to jpy i want this rate uh, this uh, and jpy to inr see here it's actually the reverse one whenever we find this rate we find it this way jpy to inr this is what we find out and then jpy to usd into usd to inr this is what we find out always so now first find out this if you want you can reverse this if they if they ask you in inr to jpy you can reverse this later because this rate is difficult to find out this rate is very simple so jpy to usd what is the rate jpy to usd and usd to inr you know it see here this is 48.10 and this jpy to usd is you don't know this is 91.50 but that, that is what this is usd to jpy so that is 91.50 so if i want jpy to usd this is upon 1 so if i want jpy to usd it will be j upon u equals to 1 upon 91.50 okay that will be the rate so now i have got the jpy to usd rate multiply this put it over here so my answer will be 1 upon 91.50 into 48.10 okay so what is the answer now do it on the calc everyone try it on the calc yeah let me see in the comment section let me get the answer in the comment section everyone give me the answer in the comment section 48.1 divided by 91 0.5 okay so it is 0.5256 0.5256 now this is for what this is jpy to inr okay jpy to inr but they want it for what 100 100 jpy so multiply this by 100 so it will be 52.56 where is the answer check this 52.40 or 80 they'll exactly they'll give you this Five uh, six answer or five zero they will give you six zero. Let's take it. This will be around this six zero. So fifty eight fifty two point six zero roughly five six and six zero. In exam they will give you the exact answer over here. So it will be fifty two point six zero or five six whatever this rate is. Okay, got it. Always do it for hundreds. Got it. JPY is always calculated in terms of hundreds. when the exchange rate is fixed by monetary authority of india of any country it is called as see here when it is fixed by the monetary authority means what rbi tomorrow says that dollar to inr rate dollar to inr rate okay is let's say 70 rupees fixed fixed no changes in that it will not fluctuate it is fixed by this monetary authority so in this case what is it called as direct indirect floating or fixed direct indirect floating or fixed it is called as fixed isn't it it is fixed by the monetary authority of that country so it is fixed but obvious see here these things are done in many of the countries like i'll tell you there is huge interference in the currency by many of the countries directly i'll tell you where china if you check china their currency is what what is the currency of china anyone can give me what is the currency of china it is yuan right yuan main currency is there renminbi also but uh, main is yuan right
China interferes a lot in the currency. It is administered rate, you can call it. Means administered means it is administered by the government, direct interference. Whereas in India, it's not fixed by the by any by any RBI or anyone. It is based on demand and supply. China interferes in this currency and it wants, if it wants, it can reduce the rate. If it wants, it can increase the rate whenever it wants, whenever the government decides. So this is known as this interfered rate. So it is fixed by, they say that yes, we are also free floating currency, but nothing like that. Okay, it is fixed. Got it? Everyone subscribe to Officers Adda 24-7 YouTube channel. In this channel, you will be getting the latest updates from IIBF on JIB and CIB, various notifications, change in timing, change in subject, change in this. They give this now in the, uh, during the exam days, IIBF gives many notifications. So all of them you get it immediately on officers at that 20%. You need not go to that IIBF website every now and then. Okay. So, and secondly, free YouTube series. Right now, what are you watching? You are watching the free YouTube series. So similarly, you'll be getting the free YouTube series on all the subjects of JIB and CIB, all of them. Okay, so subscribe to it right now. Click on this bell icon, share it with your friends. Very important, okay? Bell icon is important so that you get the notifications. When the exchange rate is fixed by the market demand and supply position, it is called as market demand and supply position. Means whatever, if your demand is high, your rate goes high. If your supply is high, your rate goes low. Do you know this concept? Suppose if demand and supply means what? If the demand for dollar goes up, demand for dollar, let's say it will go up. If it goes up, then what happens? The rate for dollar becomes what? The rate for dollar will be high or low? Give me. Will it be just type H or L? Will it be H or L? If the demand for dollar is high, will, will the rate for dollar will be high, high or low? It is high, correct? So, if see your logic is very simple. If the demand for any commodity is high, the rate for that commodity will go up. Right? This happens, when does this happen? This happens when you have huge fund flows coming in. Suppose if in India, there are large amount of dollars coming in, large dollars large amount everyone is investing dollars okay large dollars are coming in then what will happen in that case the supply will increase supply okay supply will go up if supply goes up then what happens? the rate goes down so the dollar rate will go down right so when large dollars come in supply goes up supply of dollar goes up and the rate goes down and vice versa if the dollars go out of the country if all the investors are moving out of the country, so dollars are moving out then in that case. Dollars are moving out. Okay. If dollars are moving out means what happens? There is a less supply of dollars in this country. Then the rate will go up. So what is this called as actually? Whenever it's decided by this demand and supply position, it is called as what? Direct, floating, indirect or fixed rate. It is called as floating rate. Correct. It is called as floating rate. Remember, fixed and floating, these are the two main rates. What is this direct and indirect? Direct and indirect rates are also there. We, what do we use in India? So if I say $1 equals to 80 rupees. So what is this now? Is this a direct rate or indirect rate? Type in the comment section. Is this a direct or indirect? Give me the rate. Direct or indirect? What is this called as? It is? What do you say guys? Direct or indirect? It is called as direct rate. Direct. Whenever your dollar, remember, it's the logic is simple. Your dollar is fixed and your rupee currency, local currency is fluctuating. It is called as direct rate. Indirect is reverse. Suppose if I give you 1 pound equals to 1.5 dollars. So here what is happening? Dollar is fluctuating. So this is called as indirect rate. When your dollar is fluctuating, it is called as indirect rate. Okay. So now remember, we in India should move out from this rate to this rate system. Because we must 
develop ourselves so so big that these we must also have this indirect rate system dollar should fluctuate and rupee should be stable right now it's the reverse thing but although now again i'll tell you don't confuse yourself with the currency because if you look at it pound is now having the indirect rate okay but pound is having what indirect means what is this economy bigger than that of india no indian economy is bigger than that of the this uh, britain economy or london economy then also they are having this indirect because these rates were fixed long back that's why they are still prevailing now within few years this will go this won't remain for long so because if the pound is not growing if the country is not growing will this indirect rate remain no us will say no forget this make this uh, pound also in the direct rate and in coming years if we grow with such this uh, such a speed there will be a time when we are direct rate will be converted to indirect rate we will be the governing power because we are already planning for growing to uh, third number of the economy right we are right now at fifth and we are moving towards the third so when we move towards the third these rates will change okay so this is got the concept of direct indirect floating and fixed right the term bid rate stands for bid bid means what bid rate bid offer bid offer okay bid offer it's like this bid offer so you call it buy and sell buy and sell so bid stands for direct indirect buying and selling so it stands for isn't it buying buying rate the selling rate of a foreign currency offered by a bank is called as just now we did it selling rate sell rate is known as what it's give me in the comment section just now we saw it yeah this one sell is what correct type fast offer isn't it everyone download adda 24/7 app on your mobile in this app you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes ebooks tests whatever we need for clearing this gib and cib we will get it we will be getting it over here so that's why download this app immediately and start studying don't just download okay start studying country risk is an example of market risk credit risk operational risk and liquidity risk so country risk is an example of what yeah it is credit okay remember credit risk is of two types credit mainly there can be various types but mainly two types okay one is country and second is counterparty counter party okay what do you mean by this credit risk country risk means what your party is good means a is selling to b let's say a is selling the goods to b okay so b is good but a country in which b is living is bad afghanistan north korea so b is good but a second party is counter party here b is bad country is good usa somebody staying in usa somebody staying in europe countries are good but the party is bad so that is counter party so country risk is an example of what credit risk isn't it all of the following are the types of price risk except except so which is not the type of price risk all of them let's see price risk means what commodity price risk the price of any commodity what is a commodity commodity is anything dollar is also a commodity okay currency is also a commodity so commodity price risk exchange rate risk that is also price risk because if the dollar rate changes or the exchange rate changes definitely the price will change so this is also the part stock price risk and counterparty risk now it's typical one counterparty is what just now we saw it credit so is it a part of, part of price risk no isn't it so this is the answer so these are all are true 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 and this one is false and we want false only which is not the type of price risk right stock price risk obviously stock price risk is a part part of price risk only isn't it
in financial bond markets and uh, uh, in financial bond uh, in financial market bond prices and yields are so this uh, bond price and yields are what directly or inversely related inversely directly inversely or directly depending on the type of the bond none of the above so the bond prices and yields are always they are always once remember the price of the uh, this uh, rate of interest yield we call it yield means what it's the rate of expected rate of interest here what is yield you need to understand that also expected rate of interest expected roi okay that is yield there are two rates always in any bond one is coupon and second is yield right so coupon is always fixed once it is given it's fixed you can't change it but this yield goes on changing expected rate goes on changing if the expected roi goes up then the price of your bond existing bond will go down always remember if the expected roi goes down your price of the bond will go up so it is what inversely related isn't it in financial uh, bond market or market bond prices and yields are inversely related always you see this what happened in this uh, what october just type on google october 22 to december 22 check the us bond rates us bond rates check this you will get this in us the prices of the bond fell like anything why because the rate of interest or the bank the federal reserve increased the rate of interest so that was the point okay now how to join this uh, offices at that 24/7 youtube channel or the instagram channel or the linkedin channel scan this qr code for this linkedin channel scan this qr code blue one for the youtube channel scan this black qr code this one and for the instagram channel scan this qr code you can join it immediately okay because on these channels we are giving free youtube series we are giving ebooks we are giving test some of the sample ebooks simple some during the exams we take various test as such free tests so you can join this right now isn't it rate of cancelling the original contract is means whenever we cancel the original contract rate it is done at what rate tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling Sir, cancelling the original contract rate it depends on what rate are we talking of. Suppose I am calling buy rate, rate of cancelling the buy rate. Okay, so if I have purchased this dollar earlier, okay, if I have purchased it, I might have purchased it at what rate? I might have purchased it at either bill buying or TT buying, depending on what type of transaction what it it was. If it was a, a spot transaction, I might have done it at TT buying. If it was a bill transaction i might have done at a bill buying rate but cancelling is always done at the same rate that is known as tt selling cancelling here cancelling means reversing that transaction so that will be always done at tt selling rate of booking a new contract for next one month is tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling here next one month i want so just now i told you spot transaction spot will always be done at tt whereas future future transaction will always be done at bill bill okay so it will be done at a bill rate but bill means what booking new contract for one month which contract suppose if i say export contract export so export means what buying so i'll be using bill buying rate so i'll be using bill buying over here if it's import then i'll be using bill selling rate so next one month export the question is given then you'll be doing it at bill buying rate okay hi friends welcome to adda 24/7 we are in the scholar series for bfm here we are covering important theory and objective questions so watch the series till the end okay let's start if usd to inr rate is given as 48.10 and pound to usd rate is given as 1 What is the rate of pound to INR? Now, what is the what is it to be used? It, we are using what over here? We'll be using chain rule, right? Chain rule. What is the chain rule? When you don't know the rates of any currency, vis-a-vis -vis your local currency, okay? Means this pound to INR. If you don't know the rate, do you know the rates of pound to INR over here? No. 
but you are having the other rates with some base currency rates you are having so what do you do we use the chain rule what is the chain rule we use it like this you have pound to we what, what do you want say this pound to INR I'll write it P to I okay let's keep it simple P to I so it will be what pound to USD into USD to INR chain rule you have studied this in your uh, JIB also so pound to USD rate is what one so keep it one only USD to INR is what 48.10 so your answer will be one into 48.10 okay so D is the answer isn't it simple one next one shall if USD INR rate is 48.10 USD JPY rate is 91.50 what is the rate of INR to JPY this is not simple calculate the rate for 100 JPY remember JPY is always JPY means what Japanese yen I'll write it JPY means Japanese yen okay it is their currency so Japanese yen Japanese yen is always calculated in terms of hundreds we always calculated 100 JPY, 200 JPY, 300 JPY. Rates are quoted in that that angle. Why? Because the currency is very small. Now it doesn't mean. Remember, the currency is lower. It doesn't mean the country is lower. Japan is the most developed country, one of the top five developed countries in this world. Okay. So once you have this top five developed countries and their currency is lower than that of Indians. You will say then it is less developed than India? No, nothing like that. Currency is not at all related to the development of any country. Okay. So now, Japanese yen. Okay. So what is the rate now? You want what? INR to JPY. See here. It is INR to JPY we want it. INR to JPY. I will write this J over here. Okay. So again use the same chain rule. INR to USD. USD into USD to JPY. So are you having both the rates? INR to USD. Are you having INR to USD? See here, USD to INR rate is given. INR to USD into USD to JPY. This is what you want. So how will you do this? See here, we always, when I am saying this INR to JPY, I want this rate, uh, this uh, and JPY to INR. See here, it's actually the reverse one. Whenever we find this rate, we find it this way. JPY to INR. This is what we find out. And then JPY to USD into USD to INR. This is what we find out always. So now first find out this. If you want, you can reverse this. If they if they ask you in INR to JPY, you can reverse this later. Because this rate is difficult to find out. This rate is very simple. So JPY to USD, what is the rate? JPY to USD. And USD to INR, you know it. See here, this is 48.10. And this JPY to USD is, you don't know, this is 91.50, but that, that is what? This is USD to JPY. So that is 91.50. So if I want JPY to USD, this is upon 1. So if I want JPY to USD, it will be J upon U equals to 1 upon 91.50. Okay, that will be the rate. So now I've got the JPY to USD rate. Multiply this, put it over here. So my answer will be, 1 upon 91.50 into 48.10. Okay, so what is the answer now? Do it on the Calci, everyone. Try it on the Calci. Yeah. Let me see in the comment section. Let me get the answer in the comment section. Everyone, give me the answer in the comment section. 48.1 divided by 91. 0.5 okay so it is 0 0.5256 0 0.5256 now this is for what this is jpy to inr okay jpy to inr but they want it for what 100 100 jpy so multiply this by 100 so it will be 52.56 where is the answer check this 52.40 or 80 they will exactly they will give you this uh, 5 6 answer or 5 0 they will give you 6 0 let's take it this will be around this 6 0 so 58 52.60 roughly 
फाइव सिक्स एंड सिक्स जीरो इन द एग्जाम देर गिव द एग्जैक्ट आंसर ओवर हियर सो इट बी फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट सिक्स जीरो और फाइव सिक्स वट एवर दिस रेट इज ओके गॉट इट ऑलवेज डू इट फॉर हंड्रेड्स गॉट इट जेपी वाइज ऑलवेज कैलकुलेटेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ हंड्रेड्स वेन द एक्सचेंज रेट इज फिक्स बाय मॉनिटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया ऑफ एनी कंट्री इट इज कॉल्ड एज सियर वेन इट इज फिक्स बाय द मॉनिटरी अथॉरिटी मीन्स वॉट आर बी आई टूमोरो सेज दैट डॉलर टू आई एन आर रेट डॉलर टू आई एन आर रेट ओके इज लेट से सेवेंटी रुपीज फिक्सड फिक्सड नो चेंजेस इन दैट इट विल नॉट फ्लक्चुएट इट इज फिक्स बाय दिस मॉनिटरी अथॉरिटी सो इन दिस केस वट इज इट कॉल्ड एज डायरेक्ट इनडायरेक्ट फ्लोटिंग और फिक्सड डायरेक्ट इनडायरेक्ट फ्लोटिंग और फिक्सड इट इज कॉल्ड एज फिक्सड इज इंट इट it is fixed by the monetary authority of that country so it is fixed but obvious see here these things are done in many of the countries like i'll tell you there is huge interference in the currency by many of the countries directly i'll tell you where china if you check china their currency is what what is the currency of china anyone can give me what is the currency of china it is yuan right yuan Main currency is there, renminbi also, but uh, main is yuan, right? China interferes a lot in that currency. It is administered rate, you can call it. Means administered means it is administered by the government, direct interference. Whereas in India, it's not fixed by the by any by any RBI or anyone. It is based on demand and supply. China interferes in this currency, and it wants if it wants it can reduce the rate. If it wants, it can increase the rate whenever it wants, whenever the government decides. So this is known as this interfered rate. So it is fixed by. They say that yes, we are also free floating currency, but nothing like that. Okay, it is fixed. Got it? Everyone, subscribe to Officer Zadar Twenty Four Seven YouTube channel. In this channel, you will be getting the latest updates of from IIBF on JIB and CIB various notifications. change in timing change in subject change in this we give the now in the, uh, during the exam days i have gives many notifications so all of them you get it immediately on officers at that 24/7 you need not go to that i have website every now and then okay so and secondly free youtube series right now what are you watching you are watching the free youtube series so similarly you'll be getting the free youtube series on all the subjects of jib and cib all of them okay so subscribe to it right now click on this bell icon share it with your friends very important okay bell icon is important so that you get the notifications when the exchange rate is fixed by the market demand and supply position it is called as market demand and supply position means whatever if your demand is high your rate goes high if your supply is high your rate goes low do you know this concept suppose if demand and supply means what If the demand for dollar goes up, demand for dollar, let's say it will go up. If it goes up, then what happens? The rate for dollar becomes what? The rate for dollar will be high or low? Give me. Will it be just type H or L? Will it be H or L? If the demand for dollar is high, will will the rate for dollar will be high high or low? It is high. Correct. So if See, our logic is very simple. If the demand for any commodity is high, the rate for that commodity will go up, right? This happens. When does this happen? This happens when you have huge fund flows coming in. Suppose if in India there are large amount of dollars coming in, large dollars, large amount. Everyone is investing dollars. Okay, large dollars are coming in. Then what will happen? in that case the supply will increase supply okay supply will go up if supply goes up then what happen the rate goes down to so the dollar rate will go down right so when large dollars come in supply goes up supply of dollar goes up and the rate goes down and vice versa if the dollars go out of the country if all the investors are moving out of the country so dollars are moving out then in that case dollars are moving out Okay, if dollars are moving out, means what happens? There is a less supply of dollars in this country. Then the rate will go up. 
So what is this called as actually? Whenever it's decided by this demand and supply position, it is called as what? Direct, floating, indirect or fixed rate. It is called as floating rate. Correct? It is called as floating rate. Remember, fixed and floating, these are the two main rates. What is this direct and indirect? Direct and indirect rates are also there. What do we use in India? So if I say one dollar equals to 80 rupees. So what is this now? Is this a direct rate or indirect rate? Type in the comment section. Is this a direct or indirect? Give me the rate. Direct or indirect? What is this called as? It is. What do you say guys? Direct or indirect? It is called as direct rate. Direct. Whenever your dollar. Remember. It, the logic is simple. Your dollar is fixed. And your rupee currency, local currency is fluctuating. It is called as direct rate. Indirect is reverse. Suppose if I give you 1 pound equals to 1.5 dollars. So here what is happening? Dollar is fluctuating. So this is called as indirect rate. When your dollar is fluctuating, it is called as indirect rate. Okay. So now remember, we in India should move out from this rate to this rate system. Because we must develop ourselves so so big that these we must also have this indirect rate system. Dollar should fluctuate and rupee should be stable. Right now it's the reverse thing. But although now again I'll tell you, don't confuse yourself with the currency. Because if you look at it, pound is now having the indirect rate. Okay. But pound is having what? Indirect means what? Is this economy bigger than that of India? No. Indian economy is bigger than that of the this uh, Britain economy or London economy. Then also they are having this indirect because these rates were fixed long back. That's why they are still prevailing. Now within few years this will go. This won't remain for long. So Because if the pound is not growing, if the country is not growing, will this indirect rate remain? No. US will say no, forget this. Make this uh, pound also in the direct rate. And in coming years, if we grow with such this uh, such a speed, there will be a time when we are direct rate will be converted to indirect rate. We will be the governing power. Because we are already planning for growing to uh, third number of the economy, right? We are right now at fifth and we are moving towards the third. So when we move towards the third, these rates will change. Okay. So this is what the concept of direct, indirect, floating and fixed. Right. The term bid rate stands for bid. Bid means what? Bid rate. Bid offer. Bid offer. Okay. Bid offer. It's like this. Bid offer. So you call it buy and sell. Buy and sell. So bid stands for direct, indirect, buying and selling. So it stands for, isn't it, buying, buying rate. The selling rate of a foreign currency offered by a bank is called as, just now we did it, selling rate, sell rate is known as what? Yes. Give me, in the comment section, just now we saw it. Yeah, this one, sell is what? Correct, type fast, offer, isn't it? Everyone download Adda 24-7 app on your mobile. In this app, you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes, ebooks, tests. Whatever we need for clearing this GIB and CIB, we will get it. We'll be getting it over here. So that's why download this app immediately and start studying. Don't just download. Okay. Start studying. Country risk is an example of market risk, credit risk, operational risk, and liquidity risk. So country risk is an example of what? Yeah, it is credit. Okay, remember credit risk is of two types. Credit mainly there can be various types, but mainly two types. Okay, one is country, and second is counterparty. Counter party. Okay, what do you mean by this? Credit risk, country risk means what? Your party is good, means A is selling to B. Let's say A is selling the goods to B. Okay. 
सो बी इज गुड बट अ कंट्री इन विच बी इज लिविंग इज बैड अफगानिस्तान नॉर्थ कोरिया सो बी इज गुड बट अ सेकेंड पार्ट इज काउंटर पार्ट यूर बी इज बैड कंट्री इज गुड यूएसए समबडी स्टेइंग इन यूएसए समबडी स्टेइंग इन यूरोप कंट्रीज आर गुड बट अ पार्ट इज बैड सो दैट इज काउंटर पार्ट तो कंट्री रिस्क इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वॉट क्रेडिट रिस्क इज इन टिप्स All of the following are the types of price risk, except except so which is not the type of price risk. All of them. Let's see. Price risk means what? Commodity price risk. The price of any commodity. What is a commodity? Commodity is anything. Dollar is also a commodity. Okay. Currency is also a commodity. So commodity price risk. Exchange rate risk. That is also price risk because if the dollar rate changes or the exchange rate changes. definitely the price will change so this is also the part stock price risk and counterparty risk now it's typical one counterparty is what just now we saw it credit so is it a part of part of price risk no isn't it so this is the answer so these are all are true 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 and this one is false and we want false only which is not the type of price risk right stock price risk obviously stock price risk is a part part of price risk only isn't it in financial bond markets and uh, uh, in financial bond uh, in financial market bond prices and yields are so this uh, bond price and yields are about directly or inversely related inversely directly inversely or directly depending on the type of the bond none of the above so the bond prices and yields are always they are always once remember the price of the uh, this uh, rate of interest yield we call it yield means what it's the rate of expected rate of interest here what is yield you need to understand that also expected rate of interest expected roi okay that is yield there are two rates always in any bond one is coupon and second is yield right so coupon is always fixed once it is given it's fixed you can't change it but this yield goes on changing expected rate goes on changing if the expected roi goes up then the price of your bond existing bond will go down always remember if the expected roi goes down the price of the bond will go up so it is what inversely related isn't it in financial uh, bond market or market bond prices and yields are inversely related always you see this what happened in this uh, what october just type on google october 22 to december 22 check the us bond rates us bond rates check this you will get this in us the prices of the bond fell like anything why because the rate of interest or the bank the federal reserve increased the rate of interest so that was the point okay now how to join this uh, offices at that 24/7 youtube channel or the instagram channel or the linkedin channel scan this qr code for this linkedin channel scan this qr code blue one for the youtube channel scan this black qr code this one and for the instagram channel scan this qr code you can join it immediately okay because on these channels we are giving free youtube series we are giving ebooks we are giving test some of the sample ebooks simple some during the exams we take various test as such free tests so you can join this right now isn't it rate of cancelling the original contract is means whenever we cancel the original contract rate it is done at what rate tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling so here cancelling the original contract rate it depends on what rate are we talking of suppose i am calling buy rate rate of cancelling the buy rate okay so if i have purchased this dollar earlier okay if i have purchased it i might have purchased it at what rate i might have purchased it at either bill buying or tt buying depending on what type of transaction was it it was if it was a spot transaction i might have done it at tt buying if it was a bill transaction i might have done at a bill buying rate but cancelling is always done at the same rate that is known as tt selling cancelling sir cancelling means reversing the transaction so that will be always done at tt selling rate of booking a new contract for next one month if tt buying tt selling 
bill buying, bill selling. See here, next one month I want. So just now I told you spot transaction, spot will always be done at TT. Whereas future, future transaction will always be done at bill. Bill, okay. So it will be done at a bill rate. But bill means what? Booking new contract for one month. Which contract? Suppose if I say export contract, export. So export means what buying. So I'll be using bill buying rate. So I'll be using bill buying over here. If it's import, then I'll be using bill selling rate. So next one month export the question is given, then you'll be doing it at bill buying rate. Okay. Hi friends, welcome to Adda 24-7. We are in the scholar series for BFM. Here we are covering important theory and objective questions. So watch the series till the end. Okay, let's start. If USD to INR rate is given as 48.10 and pound to USD rate is given as 1, what is the rate of pound to INR? Now, what is it, what is it to be used? It, we are using what? Over here, we will be using chain rule, right? Chain rule. What is the chain rule? When you don't know the rates of any currency, vis-a-vis -vis your local currency, Okay, means this pound to INR. If you don't know the rate, do you know the rates of pound to INR over here? No. But you are having the other rates, means some base currency rates you are having. So what do you do? We use the chain rule. What is the chain rule? We use it like this. You have pound to, we, what, what do you want? See this, pound to INR. I will write it P to I. Okay, let's keep it simple. P to I. So it will be what? Pound to USD into USD to INR. Chain rule, you have studied this in your uh, JIB also. So, pound to USD rate is what? 1. So, keep it 1 only. USD to INR is what? 48.10. So, your answer will be 1 into 48.10. Okay? So, D is the answer. Isn't it? Simple one. Next one. Chal. If USD INR rate is 48.10, USD JPY rate is 91.50, what is the rate of INR to JPY? This is not simple. Calculate the rate for 100 JPY. Remember, JPY is always, JPY means what? Japanese Yen. I'll write it. JPY means Japanese Yen. Okay? It is their currency. So, Japanese Yen. Japanese Yen is always calculated in terms of hundreds. We always calculated 100 JPY, 200 JPY, 300 JPY. Rates are quoted in that, that angle. Why? Because the currency is very small. Now, it doesn't mean, remember, the currency is lower. It doesn't mean the country is lower. Japan is the most developed country, one of the top five developed countries in this world. Okay. So, once you have this top five developed countries and their currency is lower than that of Indians, you'll say then it is less developed than India? No, nothing like that. Currency is not at all related to the development of any country. Okay. So, now, Japanese yen. Okay, so what is the rate now? You want what? INR to JPY. See here, it is INR to JPY we want it. INR to JPY. I'll write this J over here. Okay, so again use the same chain rule. INR to USD. USD into USD to JPY. So are you having both the rates? INR to USD. Are you having INR to USD? See here, USD to INR rate is given. INR to USD into USD to JPY. This is what you want. So how will you do this? See here, you always, when I am saying this INR to JPY, I want this rate, uh, this uh, and JPY to INR. See here, it's actually the reverse one. Whenever we find this rate, we find it this way. JPY to INR, this is what we find out. And then JPY to USD into USD to INR. This is what we find out always. So now first find out this. If you want, you can reverse this. If they if they ask you in INR to JPY, you can reverse this later. Because this rate is difficult to find out. This rate is very simple. So JPY to USD, what is the rate? JPY to USD. And USD to INR, you know it. So yeah, this is 48.10. And this JPY to USD is, you don't know. This is 91.50, but that, that is what? This is USD to JPY. 
So that is 91.50. So if I want JPY to USD, this is upon one. So if I want JPY to USD, it will be J upon U equals to one upon 91.50. Okay, that will be the rate. So now I've got the JPY to USD rate. Multiply this, put it over here. So my answer will be one upon 91.50 into 48.10. Okay, so what is the answer now? Do it on the Calci, everyone. Try it on the Calci. Yeah. Let me see in the comment section. Let me get the answer in the comment section. Everyone, give me the answer in the comment section. 48.1 divided by 91.5. Okay. So it is 0 0.5256. 0 0.5. 256. Now, this is for what? This is JPY to INR. Okay, JPY to INR. But they want it for what? 100. 100 JPY. So, multiply this by 100. So, it will be 52.56. Where is the answer? Check this. 52.40 or 80. They will exactly, they will give you this uh, 56 answer or 50 they will give you. 60, let's take it. This will be around this. 60. So, 58, 52.60 roughly. 56 and 60. In the exam, they'll give you the exact answer over here. So it'll be 52.60 or 56, whatever this rate is. Okay, got it? Always do it for hundreds. Got it? JPY is always calculated in terms of hundreds. When the exchange rate is fixed by monetary authority of India, of any country, it is called as. Here, when it is fixed by the monetary authority, means what? RBI tomorrow says that dollar to INR rate, dollar to INR rate, okay, is let's say 70 rupees, fixed, fixed, no changes in that. It will not fluctuate. It is fixed by this monetary authority. So in this case, what is it called? As? Direct, indirect, floating or fixed. Direct, indirect, floating or fixed. It is called as fixed, isn't it? It is fixed by the monetary authority of that country. So it is fixed, but obvious. See here, these things are done in many of the countries. Like I'll tell you, there is huge interference in the currency by many of the countries directly. I'll tell you where. China. If you check China, their currency is what? What is the currency of China? Anyone can give me? What is the currency of China? It is Yuan, right? Yuan. Main currency is there, Brennan Day also, but uh, main it's Yuan, right? China interferes a lot in that currency. It is administered rate, you can call it. Means administered means it is administered by the government, direct interference. Whereas in India, it's not fixed by the by any country, by any RBI or anyone. It is based on demand and supply. China interferes in this currency and it wants, if it wants, it can reduce the rate. If it wants, it can increase the rate whenever it wants, whenever the government decides. So this is known as this interfered rate. So it is fixed by, they say that yes, we are also free floating currency, but nothing like that. Okay, it is fixed. Got it? Everyone subscribe to Officers Adda 24-7 YouTube channel. In this channel, you will be getting the latest updates from IIBF on JIB and CIB, various notifications. Change in timing, change in subject, change in this. They give this now in the, uh, during the exam days. IBF gives many notifications. So all of them you get it immediately on officers at that 24-7. You need not go to that IBF website every now and then. Okay. So and secondly, free YouTube series. Right now, what are you watching? You are watching the free YouTube series. So similarly, you'll be getting the free YouTube series on all the subjects of JIB and CIB, all of them. Okay. So subscribe to it right now. Click on this bell icon. Share it with your friends. Very important. Okay. Bell icon is important so that you get the notifications. When the exchange rate is fixed by the market demand and supply position, it is called as market demand and supply position. Means whatever, if your demand is high, your rate goes high. If your supply is high, your rate goes low. Do you know this concept? Suppose if demand and supply means what? If the demand for dollar goes up, demand for dollar, let's say it will go up. If it goes up, 
then what happens? The rate for dollar becomes what? The rate for dollar will be high or low? Give me. Will it be just type H or L? Will it be H or L? If the demand for dollar is high, will will the rate for dollar will be high high or low? It is high, correct? So if see your logic is very simple. If the demand for any commodity is high, the rate for that commodity will go up. Right? This happens when does this happen? This happens when you have huge fund flows coming in. Suppose if in India there are large amount of dollars coming in, large dollars, large amount. Everyone is investing dollars. Okay, large dollars are coming in. Then what will happen? In that case, the supply will increase. Supply, okay, supply will go up. If supply goes up, then what happens? The rate goes down. So the dollar rate will go down, right? So when large dollars come in, supply goes up, supply of dollar goes up, and the rate goes down, and vice versa. If the dollars go out of the country, if all the investors are moving out of the country, so dollars are moving out. Then in that case, dollars are moving out. Okay. If dollars are moving out, means what happens? There is a less supply of dollars in this country. Then the rate will go up. So what is this called as actually? Whenever it's decided by this demand and supply position, it is called as what? Direct, floating, indirect, or fixed rate. It is called as floating rate. Correct? It is called as floating rate. Remember, fixed and floating. These are the two main rates. What is this direct and indirect? Direct and indirect rates are also there. What do we use in India? So if I say one dollar equals to eighty rupees. So what is this now? Is this a direct rate or indirect rate? Type in the comment section. Is this a direct or indirect? Give me the rate. Direct or indirect? What is this called as? It is. What do you say, guys? Direct or indirect? It is called as direct rate. Direct. Whenever your dollar, remember, it the logic is simple. Your dollar is fixed. And your rupee currency, local currency is fluctuating. It is called as direct rate. Indirect is reverse. Suppose if I give you one pound equals to one point five dollars. So here, what is happening? Dollar is fluctuating. So this is called as indirect rate. When your dollar is fluctuating, it is called as indirect rate. Okay. So now remember, we in India should move out from this rate to this rate system. Because we must develop ourselves so so big that these we must also have this indirect rate system. Dollar should fluctuate and rupee should be stable. Right now it's the reverse thing. But although now again I'll tell you, don't confuse yourself with the currency because if you look at it, pound is now having the indirect rate. Okay, but pound is having what indirect means what? Is this economy bigger than that of India? No, Indian economy is bigger than that of the this uh, Britain economy or London economy. Then also they are having this indirect because these rates were fixed long back. That's why they are still prevailing. Now within few years this will go. This won't remain for long. So because if the pound is not growing, if the country is not growing, will this indirect rate remain? No. U.S. will say no. Forget this. Make this uh, pound also in the direct rate. And in coming years, if we grow with such this uh, such a speed, there will be a time when we are direct rate will be converted to indirect rate. We will be the governing power because we are already planning for growing to uh, third number of the economy. Right? We are right now at fifth, and we are moving towards the third. So when we move towards the third, these rates will change. Okay. So this is got the concept of direct, indirect, floating, and fixed. Right. The term bid rate stands for bid. Bid means what? Bid rate. Bid offer. Bid offer. Okay. Bid offer. It's like this. Bid offer. So you call it buy and sell. Buy and sell. So bid stands for direct, indirect buying and selling. So it stands for, isn't it buying, buying rate? 
the selling rate of a foreign currency offered by a bank is called as just now we did it selling rate sell rate is known as what give me in the comment section just now we saw it yeah this one sell is what correct type fast offer isn't it everyone download adda 24/7 app on your mobile in this app you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes ebooks tests whatever we need for clearing this gib and cib we will get it we will be getting it over here so that's why download this app immediately and start studying don't just download okay start studying Total risk is an example of market risk, credit risk, operational risk, and liquidity risk. So, country risk is an example of what? Yeah, it is credit. Okay, remember credit risk is of two types. Credit mainly there can be various types, but mainly two types. Okay, one is country, and second is counterparty counter party okay what do you mean by this credit risk country risk means what your party is good means a is selling to b let's say a is selling the goods to b okay so b is good but a country in which b is living is bad afghanistan north korea so b is good but a second party is counterparty your b is bad country is good usa somebody staying in usa somebody staying in europe countries are good but the party is bad so that is counterparty so country risk is an example of what credit risk isn't it all of the following are the types of price risk except except so which is not the type of price risk all of them let's see price risk means what commodity price risk the price of any commodity what is a commodity Commodity is anything. Dollar is also a commodity. Okay, currency is also a commodity. So commodity price risk, exchange rate risk. That is also price risk because if the dollar rate changes or the exchange rate changes, definitely the price will change. So this is also the part. Stock price risk and counterparty risk. Now it's typical one. Counterparty is what just now we saw it. Credit. So is it a part of part of price risk? No. Isn't it? So this is the answer. So these all are true, 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 and this one is false. And we want false only, which is not the type of price risk, right? Stock price risk, obviously, stock price risk is a part part of price risk only, isn't it? In financial bond markets and yeah, uh, in financial bond, uh, in financial market, bond prices and yields are. So this uh, bond price and yields are what directly or inversely related? Inversely, directly, inversely or directly, depending on the type of the bond. None of the above. So the bond prices and yields are always. They are always. Once remember the price of the uh, this uh, rate of interest yield we call it. Yield means what? It's the rate of expected rate of interest. Here, what is yield? You need to understand that also. Expected rate of interest, expected ROI. Okay, that is yield. There are two rates always in any bond. One is coupon, and second is yield. Right. So coupon is always fixed. Once it is given, it's fixed. You can't change it. But this yield goes on changing. Expected rate goes on changing. If the expected ROI goes up, then the price of your bond, existing bond, will go down. Always remember. If the expected ROI goes down, your price of the bond will go up. So it is what inversely related, isn't it? In financial uh, bond market or market bond prices and yields are inversely related. Always you see this. What happened in this? Uh, what October? Just type on Google October twenty-two to December twenty-two. Check the U.S. bond rates. U.S. bond rates. Check this. You will get this. In U.S., the prices of the bond fell like anything. Why? Because the rate of interest or the bank, their Federal Reserve, increased the rate of interest. So that was the point. Okay. Now, how to join this uh, offices at that twenty four seven YouTube channel or the Instagram channel or the LinkedIn channel? Scan this QR code. For this LinkedIn channel, scan this QR code given. 
for the youtube channel scan this black qr code this one and for the instagram channel scan this qr code you can join it immediately okay because on these channels we are giving free youtube series we are giving ebooks we are giving test some of the sample ebooks simple some during the exams we take various tests as such free tests so you can join this right now isn't it rate of cancelling the original contract is means whenever we cancel the original contract rate it is done at what rate tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling here cancelling the original contract rate it depends on what rate are we talking of suppose i am calling buy rate rate of cancelling the buy rate okay so if i have purchased this dollar earlier okay if i have purchased it i might have purchased it at what rate i might have purchased it at either bill buying or tt buying depending on what type of transaction what it, it was if it was a, a spot transaction i might have done it at tt buying if it was a bill transaction i might have done at a bill buying rate but cancelling is always done at the same rate that is known as tt selling cancelling here cancelling means reversing that transaction so that will be always done at tt selling rate of booking a new contract for next one month is tt buying tt selling bill buying bill selling here next one month i want so just now i told you spot transaction spot will always be done at tt whereas future future transaction will always be done at bill bill okay so it will be done at a bill rate but bill means what booking new contract for one month which contract suppose if i say export contract export so export means what buying so i'll be using bill buying rate so i'll be using bill buying over here if it's import then i'll be using bill selling rate so next one month export the question is given then you'll be doing it at bill buying rate okay so that was the yt session for you now before going let me show you how to join the batches for the dib now remember the exam is near so it is very important that you join the batches now because it, these are just now started okay so let me show you go to adda 24/7 Click on JIB and CIB. Then click on CIB June 24. I'll always suggest you go to go through the app. In the app, you get one percent extra discount. Okay. Now see the batches. Click on all the batches. Click on view all. You'll see all the batches over here. See this. Shapath. In English, we have resolution. See this resolution batch. Click on this resolution batch. Okay. Click. You'll see the details over here. Now look at this. What do you get in these batches? You get e-books, test series, online learning classes, expert faculties, interactive classes, recorded videos, limited size batches. Now look at the benefit of each one. Click on buy now. Now the discount which you are getting is put the code Y four three two. Don't be set up for seventy five percent. Put the code Y four three two. Now apply it. Look at this seventy seven percent. Plus, if you go through the app, you'll get one percent extra. So that's why join this batch immediately. It is just now started, okay? And you can go to the Maha, go for the Mahapak also. In Mahapak, what do you get? You get multiple batches. Look at this. Go to Mahapak, CIB Mahapak 2.0. You get multiple batches over here. Now multiple batches plus e-books plus tests plus electives also. You get it over here. Electives, okay? Click on buy now. Now look at the discount again, seventy five percent. But use the code Y four three two. Now look at it, seventy-seven percent off. Plus, if in the app, then one percent extra. So that's why use this code, use the app, get maximum discount, and join the batches immediately.